Over the past 10 years of hunting and filming professionally, my journey has evolved. I once sought animals in adventure, and I still seek those things. Yet now more than ever, I seek answers around the growing questions that surround myself as a hunter. I've found that my connection to the land brings a certain clarity to the rest of my life. This is what brings me back into high country. Growing up in a hunting family, I've been around hunting ever since I was a little kid. Every aspect of the hunt from beginning to end. Through that time I've learned that whitetails are what most people hunt across North America. There's more whitetails available for people to hunt. And the majority of people live in areas where whitetails thrive. Living out west, we have whitetails, but mule deer are really what do it for me. There's just something about mule deer that's so much different than every other animal I hunt. The terrain they live in, their habits during the rut, and the difference in places they can call home, from the highest of mountains to the driest of deserts. There's just something about heading out into this big open country with a couple of buddies, the wall tent, the stove, and a deer tag in your pocket. It's a freeing feeling and something I like to do every single season. This year I was gonna be hunting with my good friend, Garrett Long. I had met Garrett through working with the Wild Sheep Foundation. We had been talking about wanting to do a hunt for years, so we decided to do a mule deer hunt. crazy how they blend in too, like even when you think you got a good eye for them or, you know, even with this blanket of snow, you'd think they'd stand out. It's incredible how they blend into these patches. Try to get up in here into some little more timber. We've just rolled in here to the area that I've mule deer hunted since I was, I mean, even before I could mule deer hunt, coming down here with Dad and George. Just rolling in here, bringing a friend of mine in, try to help him get a buck. But, probably gonna be setting camp up in the dark a little bit. Try to find a good spot here. But just tons of good country. Always exciting. It sounds like the deer are starting to rut pretty good. So, man, what an awesome time of year to come down here when the bucks are kind of acting stupid coming up out of the woodwork. You just don't know what you're going to see anywhere, really. Fun, fun time of the year to be out of here.
get in here a little later than I would like to have, but I'll be ready to go in the morning. Garrett's actually going to take his binoculars and just walk about 100 yards over here. I forgot to mention, did I just interrupt something here? No. I'm uh, supposed to be delivering packages today. <laughs> Yeah, you got a day off from UPS. My, my dad looks like a UPS bag. <laughs> He's gonna go spot a buck over the edge there. Hopefully, it's got a bunch of country to cover. I'm gonna keep getting this set up. This is like a glassing dream up here. It's almost overwhelming you know it's easy to start just scanning for the hope that a deer is going to run out in front of you instead of actually breaking it apart Whenever I come to a new area, it's always hard to get a good idea of scale. You, know, you look out in front of us here and you think that a deer is going to be this big and then you finally see one and it's this big. You almost have to get one under your belt before you actually can start spotting things it seems like because it surprises you what the scale is, especially in country like this. You know, just down here, what I thought to be about 300 yards is 900 yards which means the gear is going to be about that big. Makes it a little more difficult. Be cool if he came back and had spotted a nice buck down in there from camp. Good morale. Is this what camera guys do in order to get out of setting up wall tents. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised you didn't spot a big deer. It's kind of waiting for you to come running back. It's kind of hard but it's worth it to be patient here for just a little bit. Mm -hmm. See what kind of works up out of these bottoms. I knew our first morning would just be about covering ground and trying to find where not only the deer were hanging, but where other hunters were not. That line right there is yeah. the public, so right when we get up here, I mean, it dang near comes and touches the county road, yeah. like just across the creek. Yeah. Hunting public land like this, a lot of times my strategy day one is to figure out where everybody else is and then find out where I can fill in in between. Nothing bigger yet, just deer. But that's encouraging, I mean, back to these same spots and find deer year after year even with camps all over the place these deer they're here where the pavement ends on X begins Well, we're kind of just started up this drainage here. Cool story, we, we set our camp up and we're hunting up on National Forest on top here. And we're kind of doing some exploring, kind of seeing where other people were hunting and whatnot. And stopped to talk 
to this truck on the road to make sure they were okay and turned out to be a lady that owned this big ranch and told us to come down and talk to her husband and super nice people next thing we know they gave us access to the whole place really good people I mean so we've never stepped foot in here none of us have hunted this we're just kind of cruising up this ranch road to sort of get acquainted with it but just refreshing you know to run into people like that willing to open up their doors and so friendly we didn't even ask no just ask if she needs help and then pretty soon she offers up her place for us to go hunting on it yeah pretty cool good people Oh, heck yeah. Absolutely, man. All right. So now we have to figure out how to cover seven and a half miles in 35 minutes. You don't think you can cover a thousand yards? I mean, the reality is, is I bet if we went on a good pace to that bush, we could almost make it. I don't know if we could make it, but we could almost it would, make it. It would be close, for sure, if he didn't move. Right. And he's just kind of chilling. When we spotted this buck, it was already close to dark, the sun hugging the horizon. We knew if it was going to happen, it was going to have to happen quickly. That next hillside's 345. Knowing we didn't have much time, we didn't make the best sneak, no. and this buck smelled a rat from a long ways away. When we got to the shooting position, we were already two steps behind this buck. It wasn't even that he was moving that much, but he's just straight away from me. Let's, let's gather up, go out to that ridge. Part of what I love about being out here and staying in the wall tent is at the end of a cold, snowy day, you know that you can always go home to a hot meal. This here is living.
We knew we'd find a buck eventually. We just needed to keep moving and covering the country, picking it apart and looking at one deer at a time. When we found this buck, he was bedded in a prime location. He was bedded in a spot that the terrain would allow us to get in close enough, along with the wind direction. We knew this was our shot. It was our last day of hunting here, and Garrett really wanted to go home with the buck. Dude, thank got you. Your I guess we can talk kind of normally now. We probably can. We've been yeah. talking in a whisper for the last 72 hours in a row, including in camp, so it's hard to get out of that. Oh, Dude, man. fantastic shot. Yeah, thank you. Heck yes, 275 yards. Use the backpack to kind of lay down. And... Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, exactly what we were hoping for, huh? Heck yeah. Thank you very much. Wow. That's great. Yeah, I bet that's that deer that was up here last night. Yep, it looks like him. My letter to Will Primos came true. I wrote a letter to Will Primos when I was 12 years old and he got returned to sender. My mom didn't tell me that. But I told him that my dad was pretty good at finding critters and that I wanted to hunt with him on television. It's crazy how things work out, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Will called me last week. He's like, if you could take Gary right, out, yeah, just, it'd really take yeah, a load yeah. off of my plate. Right. So. Well, he's been sidestepping me for a while, you know. <laughs> I'm happy to be here with you. It's a yeah. pretty cool experience, man. And you just could not ask for a finer day to be out here. Beautiful day. We had snow, no sunshine, no wind. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, can't beat that with a stick. Nope. Nice, dude. Hunting out here with Garrett was a blast. It was exactly what hunting should be. We didn't take it seriously. We knew we would find a deer. But we knew we weren't gonna see each other for years down the road. And that really brought a different aspect to the hunt. I think it made us appreciate what we're really there for. And I've found the more that I hunt with people who have zero expectations for the day or what we might find, the more rewarding the hunting is. 